All right, so the first questions with recoil are, first of all, what is it? And second of all, how can it help us in our React app? Well, the answer to the first question is that recoil is a state management solution, uh, which basically means that it helps us manage the state of our React application more effectively. So in other words, as we start building more and more complex applications, the data that our front end has to deal with becomes more and more complex in a corresponding way. So Recoil helps us basically keep track of that and ensure that our applications stay performant as the complexity of our application state increases. All right, so that's the simple answer, right? Recoil is just a state management library uh, that we can use in our React apps. The more complex answer goes something like this. So remember that earlier when we started looking at React context, remember that React context basically lets two or more components share state without having to actually lift that state up into their common ancestor component. So if we have a context provider here, just assume that this is a context provider, and then we have two components inside of it, right? Component A and component B. Context basically makes it so that both components A and B can share the same state without actually having to pass that state to components A and B through props, right? If we weren't using context, we would have to actually lift up the state uh, that A and B have to share into whatever component is displaying this JSX, and then say A, right? Let's just say that it's a prop called name. We would pass some kind of value there, and B, we would have to pass that same thing, right? So in other words, that's what context allows us to do. It allows us to share state between components, uh, you know, without doing that via props. So recoil kind of does the same thing in that respect. Recoil basically allows our components to share the same state without using props, but it goes about this in a pretty different way. So the way that recoil works, is instead of having one context provider for each different resource that we want our components to be able to access, right? Remember when we created our friend tracker application, we had, you know, our friends provider like this. We had our favorites provider. And then inside of these things, we had the rest of our application, right? Now with recoil, all we have to do is wrap our entire application in a single recoil root component. And this will basically allow all the components inside here, right, inside these tags, to share recoil state. Now, let's talk a little bit about how recoil organizes its state. Recoil represents its state as something called atoms, right? So atoms are basically just pieces of data right? They could be any kind of data type. Think of these as just basic variables that are outside of any individual component, right? So one might be, you know, the user. That could just be an object representing the currently logged in user. One might be products that we've loaded from a server. One might be the number of times a user's clicked a button, right? Could be anything, really. And these atoms basically represent the state of our application at its most fundamental level. Okay, so these are atoms. Now again, the interesting part about these atoms is that they exist independently of the regular component tree, right? So while with context, that context actually wrapped the entire application and all of the elements in it, with Atoms, these things are just kind of floating around in space, if you can picture that, and any component can just get access to one if it wants it, right? If we have our component here, and it wants uh, access to the user atom, right? The current state of the user in our application. We'll see how to do that later, but essentially it can just access it directly without having to be inside a specific context provider, that sort of thing. So that's atoms. The next level up from atoms in recoil is something called selectors. Essentially what selectors do is they allow us to combine the base level data that the atoms contain into something a little bit more uh, specific, right? So the way that you might use this in our friend tracker application, just as an example, might be 
to combine the favorite IDs and the friends into actual person objects representing our favorites, right? So essentially what these selectors do is they take data from one or more atoms and make that accessible to our components in pretty much the same way that our components were able to directly access uh, the values of these atoms. You'll see what this looks like a little later on. But in, I mean, in the case here, we might wanna combine the user object and the products in order to get a list of uh, products that the user has liked or products that the user has purchased in the past, right? So you might have a selector called uh, purchased products, right? I'm just gonna write that real small there. Now, the thing about selectors is that they're just reflections. They're just transformations of data that exists up here in these atoms. Right? They don't contain their own state in any way. They can obviously contain their own logic, but they don't actually store any state like the atoms do. So, you know, you might have a lot of these too, and you can also have selectors that combine values from existing selectors if you need more complex uh, logic. And, you know, those selectors can also combine data from atoms as well. Now, the interesting part about recoil, and this is something that we're gonna take a look at a little later on when we see how to build a React app with recoil. The interesting thing about recoil is that from the point of view of a component, right, if we have our average component here, and it's accessing something from recoil, from the point of view of that component, it doesn't really know or care generally whether the value that it's trying to access from recoil is an atom or a selector. In other words, both atoms and selectors look exactly the same to our components. And what this does is it ends up making the recoil setup, right, the data that we're actually accessing from our components much more flexible because let's say that we need to add some business logic to some atom, right? Let's say that we only want to display 100 products at a time maximum. Well, in order to do that, we could just turn this products thing into a selector and have another atom behind the scenes that actually contains the products. And you know, this selector up here would be display products or something. And that would be what our component could actually use. Right, and in that situation, all we would have to change is we would have to swap out the, uh, the atom that a component was using for a selector. So the point of all of this again is just that uh, from the point of view of our components, they don't care if what they're using is an atom or a selector. It just kind of works, right? So, so anyway, that's the basic idea behind recoil. We just organize our state in terms of atoms and selectors. And from then on, we're pretty much good to go. So some of the benefits of this approach, recoil was created specifically for React. In other words, at the moment anyway, you can't use recoil with Angular, you can't use it with Vue. It's specific to React. and and the reason for this is that it was really created specifically to improve the performance of React apps. So the main benefit of Recoil is performance. So if you've worked with Redux before, and if you haven't, be sure to check out that video to see some of the differences between Redux and Recoil. With Redux, our application is basically dependent on all of the Redux logic at a time. In other words, it's a little bit monolithic if you're using Redux, because if you want to load any individual piece of the application, right, if you want to do something like code splitting, where you only load one piece of the application at a time, and then you load the others as you need them, that can be a strategy to really improve performance. If you want to do any of those when you're using Redux, you have to basically bring the entire Redux store and all the logic that it contains along with it, right? Because this component could, in theory, require all of that logic. And, you know, so just to be safe, we have to set up the entire Redux store. With Recoil, however, if we again have our, you know, just the different components in our application, and let's say that each of those components just uses one or two or, you know, let's say that these components just use some of these atoms up here, right? That one might use those ones, that one might use this one, that one might use this one, that one might use these two, 
If we now wanted to do some code splitting in our React app and only load individual components one at a time, well, Recoil actually knows how to only bring along the pieces of the state that this component's gonna need. So if we wanted to bring this component over and do some code splitting with it, Recoil would know, okay, it only is going to need that one piece of state, so that's all we'll load for the time being. Okay, so that's the main idea here. And additionally, the way that Recoil is set up really helps prevent unnecessary re-rendering in our components. Right, so just to demonstrate this a little bit, let's say that we have some components, right? Let's say that we have a page component here. Let's say that up at the top we have some kind of form, right, with a button. And let's say we have some sections on our page. Each of those sections has some subsections, and let's say that one of those subsections has a text box here, okay? Now let's say that uh, in our fictional application here, two of the components way down in the component tree, let's say this one and this one, have to share some kind of state, okay? Well, in that case, we'd really have no other option than to just lift that state up into our app level component, right? So the state would have to be up here and pass that down to this component. That component would pass it down to this button component and it would also have to be passed down to this section component here. That would have to be passed down to here, and that would have to pass it down to our input there. The problem with this is that whenever this state is updated, the entire application, right, everything inside of this component, including the component itself, has to be re-rendered. And in fairly complex pages, that can end up causing some, uh, you know, some performance issues with our applications. What Recoil allows us to do is it allows our components to just access the atoms and the pieces of state, right, such as selectors, uh, that they need independent of the component tree, right? Sort of in a similar way to what context does, except one of the key advantages of Recoil as well is that it lets us actually create new atoms and destroy atoms on the fly which is something that we can't really do with context, right? We can't just create and remove context providers without causing the whole application to re-render. Okay, so in other words, each of these components, and really any component in our application, can just use whatever pieces of the recoil state it needs, right? Whatever atoms, selectors, etc. that it needs. And if one of those atoms changes, only the components that are affected by that change will be re-rendered. All right, so if this atom here were to change in value, then only the components like this one and this one would have to re-render. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Those are the basics of recoil, and I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.